No. Well, yeah, it's not the experience for everyone, and it's not really, I don't think it's what everyone wants either. Sometimes people just like to go on there and talk shit. I mean, there's someone that's trapped in a cubicle right now, and they just want to go on there and get in arguments about gun control or, you know, yep. whether or not Nancy Pelosi's the devil. Yep. I mean, this is, this is what, you know, it, it serves a purpose for them. Yeah. The thing that gets strange, though, is who's to decide? You know, there's, the, there's, this, there's this concept... There's a discussion, I should say, where uh, some people believe that things like Twitter or Facebook or any forum where you're having a public discussion should be considered almost like a public utility. Like anyone has access to the electric power. Even if you're, you know, even if you're a racist, you still can get electricity. And some people think that you should have that same ability with something like Twitter or the same ability with something like Instagram. Obviously, this is we're in uncharted territory and you yeah. are you are in uncharted territory totally. I mean, it just, no one has been there before so who makes the distinctions when you see someone that are, that it's saying something that you might think is offensive to some folks but not offensive to the person who's saying it maybe the person who's saying it feels like they need to express themselves and this is important to say and how do you decide whether or not this is a valid discussion or if this is air quotes hate speech which is a you know there's some things that are hate speech and there's sometimes people use the term hate speech and it's just a cheap way to shut down a conversation yeah we so the simple answer is we look at conduct we don't mm. we don't look at the speech itself we look at conduct we look at how the tool is being used and you're you're right in that like i th i think when people see twitter they see and they expect it to be a public square. They can go into that public square, they can say whatever they want, they can get on a pedestal, um, and people might gather around them and listen what they have to say. Some of them might find it offensive and they leave. The difference is there's, there's also this concept of this megaphone, and the megaphone can be highly targeted now mm -hmm. with Twitter as well. Right. So it's not it's not the it's not the speech it's how it's amplified. So what do you do if like say let's let's say there's someone <clears throat> in the media. Uh, let's say it's a prominent feminist and then you have a bunch of people or let's say just one person and their Twitter feed is overwhelmingly attacking this prominent feminist. Mm -hmm. Just constantly attacking her, calling mm -hmm. her a liar, calling her this, calling her that. When do you decide this is harassment? When do you decide this is hate speech? When, like, how do you? I mean, this is we a, look at the this conduct. Is an absolute. This is a fictional account, right? Yeah, fictional yeah. person we're talking about. But in this, for instance, what what would dictate something that was egregious enough for you to eliminate them from your platform? Well, that's a that's a that's a heavy action. So that's the last resort. Um, but we look at the conduct. We look at oftentimes, as you said, like the the probability of someone who is harassing one person, it's highly probable that they're also harassing 10 more people. Right. So we can look at that behavior. We can look at how many times this person is being blocked or muted mm -hmm. or uh, reported. And based on all those, um, all that data, we can actually take some action. But we also have to we have to correlate it with the other side of that because people go on and they coordinate blocks as well and they coordinate harassment and they, and they coordinate, I'm sorry, not harassment, but reporting, um, uh, reporting a particular account to get it shut down and to, uh, to take the voice off the service. So these are the considerations we have to make, but it's, it's, it all starts with conduct and oftentimes we'll see coordinated conduct, whether it be that one person opening multiple accounts or coordinating with multiple accounts that they don't own to, you know, go after someone. And there's a bunch of vectors of people use retweet for that, uh, the quote tweet for that a lot as well. Like, you know, they'll quote tweet a, a tweet that someone finds and they'll say, look at this idiot, Twitter, do your thing. And then just this mob starts and goes and tries to effectively shut that person down. Um, so, there's a bunch of tools we can use. The permanent suspension is the last resort. One of the things that we can do is we can downrank the replies. So any of these any of these behaviors and conduct that looks link, linked, we can actually uh, push farther down in the reply chain. So it's all still there, but you might have to push a button to actually see it. You might have to see, show more replies to actually see 
uh, this harassing account or what might look like harassing language. And is this manually done? Or is no, no, this, no, no, no. This is, is this, this is all this is all automated. It's automated. Yeah, yeah. But how would you know? A lot know? of the ranking and the and looking at amplification and looking at the network is is automated. Right. Like in terms of down ranking, <laughs> is there a discussion as to whether or not this person's reply should be down ranked? Like how do you how do you figure that out? It's it's a machine learning and deep learning model, Whoa. and and they so just it's AI. It's AI, and they and oh, they Christ. learn. You know, and we. We look at um, we look at how these things are doing and where they make mistakes, and then we improve it. It's just constantly improving, constantly learning. And does that feel like censorship to you, like automated censorship? Because it, I mean, who who is to decide, other than people, whether or not something is valid? Well, we're not we're not looking at the at the speech in this particular case. We're looking at the conduct, like the conduct, the, the, the conduct of like someone in fast velocity attacking someone else. Okay, right. So. Those are the things that our technology allows. It changes the velocity. It changes uh, how, um, you know, to broadcast a message that someone didn't really ask for and didn't want to hear. We don't touch. If I follow Joe Rogan, you'll see every single tweet. We don't touch it, right? Right. But that's an audience that you earn. But in your replies page, we have a little bit more room because this is a this is a conversation that – starts up and some people just want to disrupt it and and all we're saying is we're going to look at moving the disruption down not that it's hidden but it's still there but you know you just see it a little bit farther down 